Hi, my name's Al and today I'm going to show you how to change the travel on your RockShox Solo Air Fork. You can do this to most of RockShox's trail range of forks. Basically, if you can change out the Solo Air Spring Assembly, then you can change the travel. So you might want to do this because you want to change the geometry of your bike or perhaps you're swapping the fork from one bike to another. You don't need many items to change the travel on your fork. What you do need is definitely some circuit pliers, like these. Some 0830 RockShox oil for the lower legs, because we're going to have to whip those off as part of the process. You'll see that we've already done a video on a RockShox lower leg service. This was done back in the September issue of the mag. You'll need some SRAM pit stop butter or Judy butter for the seals, a syringe to inject the oil, a few general tools and of course you'll need your new air spring assembly. Now there's various ones of these available, they're actually fitable to several different forks so this one for instance will make a 26 inch fork 160mm uh, travel, a 27.5 150 and a 29 130 which is what we're working on today. I've said it before but I'll say it again, there's a few important things to consider when you're working on suspension. First of all is make sure you release any pressure before you start working on it. So on this solo air fork we've just got one valve at the top. So depress that, you might get a bit of oil coming out, so watch your eyes. Make sure that's all gone, it'll be safe to take it apart. Next thing is to keep it completely spotless, so give it a good clean before you start taking it apart, because you don't want any dirt falling into the insides of the fork, because it will cause problems later on. And the other thing is to work systematically. Lay everything out in order as you take it apart and it'll be much, much easier to put it back together again. Okay, so with the fork clean and the air released, we're going to remove the lower legs from the fork. This is pretty easy to do. You need to remove this rebound adjuster. So it's just a two and a half mil Allen key. Just undo the grub screw, pull it free, put it somewhere safe. Make sure you've got something to catch any oil that will drain out. And then we are undoing the foot nuts at the bottom of the legs. So it's five mil Allen key, undo them a few turns, and we're going to give them a tap to release the shafts from, from inside. With those loose, we can undo them completely. We're going to keep those bolts, so don't lose them. And now we can pull the legs clear, like so. Okay, so with the lower legs off and draining in a bucket down here, now is a good time to, to give them a good clean. These ones are, are spotless, but if they are dirty, you need to pay particular attention to the seals. You're basically going through a lower leg service, which is something that we went through in the September issue of the mag. Uh, we've also got a video online to show you how to do it. It's nice and simple, but get that done, and then we can get on to changing the spring. To do that, we need to remove this top cap, it's a 24mm socket. Undo that and we'll see our single bottomless token that's in here. That is for a, a 160mm 29er fork. Depending on the wheel size that your fork's designed for and the amount of travel, then the number of bottomless tokens will vary. We're going to a 29 130mm travel, so 
SRAM would recommend three tokens for that setup. This next bit is the trickiest bit of the whole procedure and it's important that you get it right because you can damage the fork otherwise. This air shaft, if you scratch it, it will leak air. I know we're replacing it in this instance, but it'd be nice if you could sell it or perhaps use it again later. So if we push it all the way through the seal head to protect it, we need to push the plate, the seal head, to one side. So it's got a, a tang that basically sits in between the circlip, which means that you can't remove the circlip. With that out of the way, get your circlip pliers and remove the circlip like so. Then you're able to remove the whole air spring assembly. Okay, so we've cleaned the inside of the stanchion so it's absolutely spotless using new paper towels and alcohol has to be really, really clean. Any dirt in there will cause it to, to become scored and then it will leak out, which will mean new crown steer and upper, which will be really expensive. So, grease the living daylights out of the air seal and pop it into the stanchion. Give it a little wriggle. pop the seal head into the end of the stanchion like so. With our new air spring assembly in place we need to fit the circuit a bit fiddly like so. Obviously you need to make sure that the gap in the circlip lines up with the, the bit of plastic in the seal head that sits in between the two ends of the circlip. Check that the seal head is properly in place and that the circlip is in its retaining groove. Everything should move smoothly and give it a couple of yanks should all be firmly held in place. So as I said earlier, with our new shorter 130mm spring assembly, SRAM reckon that we need to pop in two further bottomless tokens. So they just screw into the bottom of the existing one. Just nip them up. You don't need to go crazy, but at the same time you don't want them to come loose. And then you're ready to tighten the top cap into the fork. Start it off by hand so you don't cross thread anything. And then tighten it up. SRAM recommend a torque setting of 28 newton meters. Okay, we're now ready to fit the lower legs. Presuming that you've done a, a lower leg service, so these are clean and the foam rings are saturated in oil, clean seals or new seals and a bit of grease in there. slide them onto the stanchions. Take care not to trap the seals or the foam rings as they go on. You only need to slide them on partially and then we're lifting the fork up and we're putting the oil bath into the lower legs. It's 5mm on the drive side and 15 on the non-drive. With the oil in there, we can fit the legs all the way. And we want to be building the fork with it fully compressed. So, Compress it all the way. It's 
release any air to hold it there and then refit the foot nuts. So you screw them into place by hand to so make sure you've got your hollow foot nut on the damper side. By building the fork compressed, you'll avoid having any, uh, any air traps in the bottom, which will create an additional air spring, which will spoil the sensitivity of your fork. So the torque set in here of 7.3 newton meters. And once they're tightened, we're ready to refit the the rebound adjuster, wipe down the fork and inflate it to our, our pressure that we run it at. So that's it, here's our newly shortened fork ready to hit the trails. Thanks for watching, see you next time, cheers!